I just thought if you can make a movie without guns in it, do it. Uh, I, you know, without making this a super political conversation, I, I do find it discouraging how many guns there are in movies, especially American movies as a whole. And you're talking about the system, right? That this this crushing system mm -hmm. that that <laughs> that graduates go out into, and then it's it's amplified in Hollywood, right? And there's also an anger to the, to what you to what you wrote, which I I feel yeah. in in moments. Yeah. Did was that? Yeah, that was real. That was real. I mean, I don't really. It's funny because I don't feel it anymore. But I spent years in this zone of just un, just deep uncertainty, of just not knowing, like, am I going to be okay? You know, am I ever going to be OK? Is this all some mistake? And then I'm going to be like in my 40s wishing I had never even tried. I spent years in that zone. And I was, I was pissed off. You know, I think I was angry. I think I felt like I've worked so hard. I've sacrificed so much. And to make it worse, I think I'm actually worth something. You know, I think if I arrived at this point where I just kind of made peace with like, ah, oh, maybe I'm not that talented, then it would have been OK. I would have been like, all right, well, go do something else. But I felt maybe this arrogant belief deep down, like I think if I had a chance, I could make something decent, you know? Like tr even Trump winning. And then I wrote a first draft of this uh, maybe a couple months after he took office. It just felt like, who sold me this line that hard work and being a good person can lead to success? Aubrey is the greatest. I can't say enough about her. Um, here's how it worked. So I had written a script that another director was attached to direct. And uh, he and I kind of became friends during that process. And he asked me, what other scripts do you have? And so I gave him, I gave him Emily the Criminal. I said, oh, this is something I wrote for myself. I'd like to direct it. And he read it, and he was like, I like this. Um, I know Aubrey Plaza. Can I give it to her? And this is just on me. But at the time, I thought that was kind of a weird idea. I was like, what, Aubrey Plaza? Really? Like, I just could, it wasn't that I disliked her, it was just I had a hard time envisioning it. And also, I just didn't think she'd want to make a movie like this. Uh, but he, he was like, no, 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 just let me, she'll be into it. And so he gave it to her, and to her credit, she read it really quickly, um, which is so rare for an actor to do. And then uh, we linked up. I remember we met at this like coffee shop near my house. I remember the whole time I was just trying to pay attention and listen, but all I could see was just like this floating Aubrey Plaza head. I, just, like, <laughs> I can't believe she's like read my script, and uh, and I just I just remember that she walked in and immediately I was just like, oh yeah, completely, this is the person. You I should just it. rewrite the entire script and just make it like just lean into every quality that I'm seeing right now because she's so unique, and so like deeply. This sounds weird, but she's like a deeply unsafe person. Like you don't know what she's gonna do. She makes you feel on edge in this wonderful way. She's like a disruptor, you know? And I'm saying these things as a compliment. Like, you yeah. really love being around her because there's never a moment that's not like weirdly suspenseful or <laughs> dangerous somehow. It's, she's but also great for, for performance. Also great for performance, yeah. yeah. So at that point, she was in, uh, and you know, it was just she and myself in a script, and it took us a while to figure out how to get it made. But that's how it started. Were you thinking about these themes, or were you just like, this is a personal story, and I'm, I just want to tell the story? At this stage, I wasn't even capable of thinking thematically. You know, I mean, I was in my mid-20s. I'd never written a feature script. I, it, I was still in the zone of like, maybe there's a scene, and then this happens after that scene, and then there's this other scene, and like, there's a scene, that's the movie. Like, I wasn't thinking in terms of like, this is thematically what's going on. Like, that happened later, because if you're a boy and you're 25 years old, your frontal lobe formed like three weeks earlier. So <laughs> I hadn't really figured it out. But like, if you're a girl, you're doing great. But boy, <laughs> shit show. With Patrol, god, that was the best, man. Yeah? That was the fucking best. Which part? The whole thing. I just, ah, it's such a wonderful memory to me. I named my production company Patrol Pictures. Oh, yeah? So that's who pays me. Like, when I get like, I'm not going to get into how an S-Corp works. But when I get paid, it comes from Patrol Pictures Incorporated. And so every time I get paid, I'm reminded of like this thing. Aww. It was something I did when I was r really young, and I didn't know how anything worked. And it was just the most pure, like, I'm going to do something that I really like and that I think is inspiring and that I think I can do well. And I'm not trying to be anybody. I I'm certainly not trying to like make some career or calling card or something. I had no idea how to do that. I just thought, like, well, this is what I can tell with great authenticity. 
Um, and is there anything better than that? And I remember just being like, oh, I think I got something, you know? And that's the thing that got on the blacklist. At this point, I was just so hungry to stop catering and have a job of any kind that I remember uh, thinking to myself, all right, why don't you just write a script that you're not going to direct? Because at that point, I'd only written stuff that I, I thought maybe I could direct, and I felt that was kind of limiting, you know? Like, I, I just, I was like, ah, if I'm going to direct it, it's got to be this certain kind of thing, and it's got to be like my thesis and blah. And then I had this idea, that being Rothschild for a movie, which just like exploded. I was like, oh man, like that's, oh, sh I got to do that. And I just thought, just don't worry about directing it. Just write it. Just like have fun. Write this thing. Just go, go nuts, you know? And I did, and it just like was such a huge lesson. I mean, there's some creative thing you have. Just go do it. And don't worry about execution. Don't worry about, like, can I make this on a low budget? Like, no. Just go write the thing that you're enthusiastic about. Because if you are having fun writing it, chances are people will have fun reading it. I just thought if you can make a movie without guns in it, do it. Uh, I, you know, without making this a super political conversation, I, I do find it discouraging how many guns there are in movies, especially American movies as a whole. Uh, so I thought, all right, if I can do this without any guns, you know, so be it. Also, I just thought, there will be more unlikely dramatic opportunities with different kinds of weapons. Maybe I can kind of force myself to be a bit more creative. The downside of it, and that's this I've only discovered afterwards, which I find so interesting, is a lot of people don't believe it because there are no guns. Like, a lot of people are like, how could this be in the US? There are no guns. <laughs> Especially people who see it outside of the US. Like, I just got back from Europe, and they were like, how is there no guns? You know? <laughs> I, you suddenly realize, like, wow, in my effort to like cancel guns from movies, it's somehow doesn't pass the litmus test of believability. It's so funny you say that. We're so, Americans are so hardwired to, I, I kept expecting like the stakes to be raised and then guns would show up in the end or something. I can see why there's so many guns in a movie. I mean, it's like the number one way to make your scene more dramatic. There's this magical device where you can like just kind of press a button and someone will die. Like for a writer, it's just like, uh, it's so obvious why guns are in films. They're incredibly useful narratively. I hate to say that, but it's true. So I just wanted to not, but not use that.